Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Zach Madono from Self Free Sciences in Japan. It is my honor to uh, introduce our technology and product of the WeGem Self Free Protein Synthesis System. We, uh, we call the whole technology and product index, which encompasses both technology and products. The contents of the talk is uh, first we we'll talk about protein expression system. Uh, then uh, I briefly uh, present you some expression data, and then we move to a robotic protein synthesizer, which make the uh, synthesis of protein easier. Then uh, briefly talk about the application, and finally the product to support the whole system. Actually, the, the right after my talk, my colleague Tomo Sato will talk about uh, and explain how this robotic protein synthesizers are designed and work. And actually, we have the machine. So all the specifics of the protein synthesizers would be presented by, by uh, uh, Dr. Sato. First, uh, I'll go to protein expression system. To be sure, the wheat germ-based uh, protein expression system existed a very long time, but it remained to be an, uh, only an academic curiosity for a long time. And the reason was uh, very simple. The reason was the system could not be ro very robust in the sense that it could not be stable for, uh, for more than uh, just, just a minute, not a minute and the system became unstable, so it could not be used as a practical cell-free system. Then the, there was a discovery by uh, the pro pro Professor Yaeta Endo and his colleagues at the Hime University that the reason why the system was, uh, was unstable was uh, due to the toxin or the translation inhibitor such as uh, treating thionin, RNAs, and DNAs as shown here. That's bad news because there's a toxin to stop the, the translation, but the good news was these toxins are all localized in endosperm. So if you remove the, the embryo or wheat germ from endosperm, most of the toxin will be gone. When you look at the embryo separated from seeds, you would see all the white powders on the surface. But if you wash them simply with water, you have a very clean embryo. And if you make a witch of extract out of this clean embryo, you have a very stable, robust expression system. That was a discovery. When you, when you use the, the extract made from unwashed embryos, it just lasts a matter of minutes or hours, but if you make extract from washed embryos, the translation reaction continues, in this case, 12 days. The, the experiment was stopped here because fungus began to develop. It's not because the, the, the system uh, became unstable. And as you see here, as time goes by, in this case, the model protein is DFP, you can continuously pro, uh, produce the GFP at this level. And then the group uh, proceeded to further improve the system, and they especially looked at the 5' prime and 3' prime UTR, and they, uh, they tried to remove both CAP and the poly A, which are rather expensive uh, 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 the sequences for uh, and uh, the, what they discovered as the result was when you have a cap, the messenger RNA, optimal messenger RNA concentration range is rather narrow. So for each protein, you, you have to optimize the system. However, if you have a, 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 a sequence without the cap, the messenger RNA dependence has a very broad range. That means once you optimize the system, it can be applied, the same protocol same, uh, can be used for broad range of proteins. So it really simplifies the system. 
Now, uh, let's look at the, 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 the protein, how protein uh, expression is done. It is done in three steps. It's an uncoupled reaction in our case. And we first prepare DNA templates, then uh, uh, move to transcription, using these transcripts into translation. And since transcription and translation are done separately, it is a decoupled system. The DNA templates, we use two kinds of uh, templates. One is plasmid-based uh, vector. Uh, it is specifically designed, and we call it PEU E01 uh, uh, vector. And another way, especially for high throughput screening, we can use PCR product, uh, and as, as, as shown here. And the PEU E01, this, uh, we have a SP6 promoter, Translation enhancer, this is an artificial sequence, then multi-cloning uh, multi uh, site. Uh, this is a PEU E01 vector. And, and uh, the very key for the successful protein expression, although it's a very straightforward, very easy, uh, easy way to produce protein, the, the good thing is that you invest a lot of time and effort and care up front. That means you do a very careful, once you do the very careful job up front, the rest of it is much easier. For example, in a subcloning, we recommend to select the restricted enzyme site as close as possible to E01 translation enhancer, that's one, and prepare very high purity plasmid DNA. Do the very clean work up front. Then, uh, the, uh, after transcription, be sure that you have obtained a very high quality messenger RNA. High quality means it's very, very clean messenger RNA. <coughs> when we say low quality messenger RNA, you see all the smear patterns in the lower molecule, uh, lower level. And if we use messenger RNA like this, the protein expression is very poor. While if you use a good, good job to make high quality messenger RNA, quality is checked and no smear under, uh, uh, underneath, you have a well-expressed proteins like this. So, again, our, cup, our system is a decoupled reaction. You do transcription and translation separately uh, using a DNA template, either a plasmid or PCR product based, transcription buffer, NTPs, RNA inhibitor, and SP6 RNA polymerase. That's the transcription system uh, transcription done at the 37 degrees C, six hours, with the current protocol. Then you use the whole transcript for translation, and translation, this wheat germ extract is the translation machinery. It does a translation, then you add translation buffer, and the current protocol is 15 degrees C for 20 hours, and or uh, uh, you can use room temperature and shorten the reaction times. Previously, we used room temperature protocol, but we have discovered since that if the protein uh, you want to express have to be protected uh, or rather unstable, lower temperature benefit. So we now recommend uh, to use lower temperature. And if you add them together in 26 hours, you do have a protein. 26 hours means overnight. So now your protein synthesis becomes a routine activity, a daily activity. You, 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 you put all these things, do transcription, and next day you get a nice protein. We also develop, we have developed three different kinds of translation reactions. First one is called bilayer method, which you explain later. The second was the repeat that. It is a kind of forceful removal of byproduct, which may uh, interfere with the, with the translation and uh, keep adding translation buffer. By doing that, you can continue uh, the, the, the translation until we can extract whole potential to produce protein is exhausted. And also, uh, we, 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 we have this filter and feed method, this means you do that more intensively, and every 15 or 30 minutes, you, you again concentrate the protein, remove byproducts, add both messenger RNA and transition buffer. 
and you continue the production. This bilayer method is used for this machine, and this filter and feed method used for that small machine.